some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. First things first, I've got a channel recommendation for you. Then we will get into the Frauditor. Now our featured Frauditor was recommended to me by this uh, following channel called Andre Sloan. Now he only has a handful of videos right now, but this guy is really talented. So check his channel out after you're done watching this video. Now, let's get on with our featured frauditor, shall we? And today's frauditor is Big Nick South Florida Accountability. And we find him trying to audit the Fort Lauderdale Post Office. But he can't get anything right, poor little guy. But I will say this, he's a lot better dressed than this skunk ape right here. And if you don't get the joke, I'll link that video in the description. In the meantime, let's sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey folks, Big Nick South Florida Accountability, doing another First Amendment audit at the United States Post Office located in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. There is an address posted on the building, but I will get that address before the audit's over. I'm going to see if the post office and the employees of the government respects my right to uh, film in public. Let's go, guys. We're going to just do an outside audit uh, for right now. I'm going to go around the back, show you the parking and the, the loading, the salad ports, and things of that nature. For the sake of time, and as usual, let's just cut out all this dead air and get to the part where he starts to fail, and then the police are called on him. Many, many minutes later. So we made our way around the post office, and now we're heading to the entranceway. Are we going to go inside and see if these workers respect our right to film in public? Let's go, guys. Hello, ma'am. See, they have a scale here. We can come in and wear your product so you can know the amount of posters that you would need in order to. Oh, gee, none of us would have known that if you hadn't pointed that out to us. We would be so lost without your brilliant analysis of that piece of technology. Fifteen minutes later. This is called Poster 7. It's in every post office in America. It's called Poster 7. It's every post office in America has it. You, you, you're not required to record in the post office. Can yes, ma'am. I have you, permission. Can you please take your, your phone? What is your name, ma'am? Could you please take your phone to leave the, the premises? Ma'am, I am conducting a First Amendment protected okay. activity that I'm allowed to do. I asked you to leave the post office. You want to identify yourself? Wow. This is what America has gotten down to. All of our freedoms are being taken away. And there's clearly stated here that I can do this. Incorrect, you lame brain moron. Like many frauditors, you tend to suffer from a logical fallacy or one of the many logical fallacies that can be found in argument and persuasion, in this case called cherry picking. Now, to demonstrate this logical fallacy, I shall use a clip of S. Elmo also getting it wrong on poster 7. Photographs for news purposes may be taken in entrances, lobbies, foyers, corridors, or auditoriums when used for public meetings, except we're prohibited, okay? It's not pro prohibited here. There are a number of things you glossed over in that you didn't even complete the whole damn paragraph and what you did read, you glossed over. The most important part that you did read but totally ignored was the part when used for public meetings. And there are no public meetings going on right there. So you don't have the authorization to do that without the installation head, which covers the last half of the paragraph you did not read. I will read the last part of the paragraph for you then. 
prohibited by official signs or security force personnel or other authorized personnel or a federal court order or rule, other photographs may be taken only with the permission of the local postmaster or installation head. And there was your example of cherry picking by S. Elmo. In our next lesson, we shall learn about Godwin's Law and its relation to Reducto et Hitlerum. But that's another video entirely. Let's just get on with the rest of this video. Five hours later. How can people get paid by the taxpayers and don't want them to have accountability over them? This is America. This isn't Nazi Germany, man. We have freedoms here. Remember what I just said a few moments ago about Godwin's Law? Well, he just crossed into Reducto ad Hitlerum territory, which means he has no argument, and he's essentially lost it. Congratulations, dude. You're a damn moron. For a better perspective on what Nazi Germany was like, you should go to North Korea. But even North Korea would make a, uh... Nazi Germany looked like a paradise. My tax dollars, your tax dollars paid for this location. Incorrect. The post office makes their own money by sale of postage stamps and their other products. And they've been doing this since the 1980s. Here's your rules and regulation here, man. Right here. Rules and regulations right here. Are we going to ignore these and jeopardize my life and call the cops for doing a lawful activity? It's right here. Would you like to see it, sir? Or are you just going to still ignore it and avert my First Amendment rights? What are you doing, man? I'm doing a story. I'm gathering information for us. story I can. It's right here. Right now, you're interrupting no customer has not complained. Only the government workers have complained. No customer has said anything. These people know freedom. Only you guys don't know freedom. No customer has complained because they can come over here and see that I'm lawfully to do it. Would you prefer I use my cannon, ma'am? This is called a career killer. Would you prefer I use this? Bootleg phone. Would she prefer I use this one? I just wanted to come in and get some quick information, but she wants to now make herself the story. So guys, you know this, this audit is automatically a fail. There's no way they can pass this audit. They don't respect the public. They don't respect the rights. They don't respect the Constitution. And I'm the bad guy because I'm exercising my rights. <laughs> I hope you guys used the non-emergency number and didn't uh, call 911. You guys are wasting resources. They're going to come in here and educate you guys on the First Amendment and the freedom of speech. You are truly a man suffering from the Dunning-Kruger effect. Well, the officers will be here in a few minutes, and they will be the ones to educate you. So let's go ahead and skip to that part, because all he does from this point on is ramble on about nothing. Many unbearable hours later... So the cops are on the way, hopefully. Um, they'll be educated on the First Amendment. And they can go in there and let these people know, first of all, they have no jurisdiction over the post office. So they can't come and bark any type of orders. This is once again a supreme example of cherry picking. Or maybe a lack of reading skill, I don't know. At any rate, let's take a look at uh, the enforcement section of Poster 7, shall we? Security force personnel will exercise the power under 18 U.S.C. 3061 C2 and are responsible for enforcing the regulations in the, this notice in a manner that will protect the U.S. Postal Service property. Postmasters or installations head may, with the approval of the chief postal inspector or designee, enter into agreements with state and local law enforcement agencies to ensure enforcement of the regulations in a manner that will protect U.S. Postal Service property. Postal inspectors, office inspector, and uh, general special agents, and anyone designated by the chief postal inspector may enforce these regulations. So, let me ask you something, dude. 
Can you read? And it's just laziness that you don't want to read all of Poster 7 and understand it properly? Or are you flat out illiterate? Or are you just buying into the propaganda of other frauditors? At any rate, none of those options make you look very good at all. Option 1 will just make you look lazy. Option 2 will make you look uneducated. And option 3 will make you look like an uneducated sheep. So while you think about those choices, let's carry on with the show, shall we? Oh, uh, this is the tyrant here, my main number one tyrant here. How's that hair looking today, Nick? See? See that antagon antagonizing ways of this particular officer? Oh, look, the tyrant said hello. Run away, run away, run away. He's going to get you. Oh, come on now. I hope you guys aren't coming out to try to force uh, any federal regulations, right? You know this is federal. Because you're not friendly. Well, Nick, if you think they don't have any authority over federal property, you're about to find out the hard way. Well, you can't give me a trespass. You're a state. You're a state and local. This is a federal building. This is a federal building. You're right in that rule, sir. And here you go, right here. Here's my permission right here. Supervisor right here. Right. But here's my permission right here. I am. I'm gathering content for a story, ma'am. I'm acting in as the media right now. I am doing official you have business. Any official post office business thing? Again, I keep yes, yeah, I'm recording. But what jurisdiction do you have here? Huh? Now Nick did leave the building voluntarily after this, so he must have figured out he wasn't gonna win this issue. Yeah, he probably realized he was in the wrong. Who knows? Maybe he'll actually back and study Poster 7, but I doubt it. Now, that's not the end of this video. I've got one more thing to show you, and it's from Andre Sloan, the recommendation that I put upon you guys earlier in the video. So, take it away. Um, I want to bring up a video that Long Island Audits, uh, a.k.a. Sean Paul Reyes of Suffolk County, New York, uh, he did this last August uh, where he posted a supposed memo from the uh, Postal Inspection Service dated August 24, 2022. And in that memo, it summed up that postal employees should not confront uh, frauditors doing their audits. Uh, the supposed memo never stated that it was legal to photograph or videotape on postal property, but only that postal employees should not confront the frauditors and that the employees would continue on with their business unless, of course, the frauditor was, was um, a danger to anyone or was causing a disturbance uh, to the postal service area. Now, I find this very interesting for two reasons. And the number one reason is, is because only Sean Paul Reyes has a copy of this memo. Nowhere is it, can it be found on the Internet. And I have searched every way to Sunday looking for it. Um, and secondly, the postal inspector investigator that I spoke with today said that that memo is uh, very suspect, as the memo that he has a copy of is older than August 24th, 2022. And my question to everybody would be, wouldn't you think the postal inspectors, investigators, would have the latest copy of that video? So, or video, I mean memo, I'm sorry. So, and also the invector, uh, ins investigator that I spoke with today confirmed that uh, the Department of Homeland Security memo of 2018 does not pertain to the post offices as the post offices are not protected by the Federal Protective Services. So if they don't protect the property, then the memo is not relevant to that property. Now, that's very interesting. Could it be that Sean Paul Reyes is lying? Well, I'll tell you what my experience with that memo is. I only saw it displayed for the first time on his channel. And I tried looking for it myself, but was never able to find it on the internet. I found a lot of other memos on the internet, but not that particular one at that time. 
I did see other fraudsters using that memo, but they were only showing the memo that Sean showed. So we got a very interesting conundrum here, and I'm sure it comes out to be that Long Island Audit is lying as usual.